In this video, I'm going to use the FASM Assembler and GCC. If you don't have these on your machine, you can just go ahead and install them with your package manager. Let's open a new source file here and call it server.asm. And now here on the right side, the documentation of the FASM Assembler. I'm going to go here to the section that talks about output formats. And I'm going to get more information about formats in 2.4 here. I'm going to scroll here until I get to the ELF section. The ELF is the format that is relevant for Linux systems. Specifically, I'm interested in the x64 architecture. I'm going to write here x64 assembly. So I'm going to use the format ELF64 directive. Afterwards, I'm going to define two sections. So I'm going to use the section directive. First one is going to be the text section. And this is going to be executable. This will contain our code. Afterwards, we're going to have the data section. And this will be writable. This will contain our variables. Afterwards, I'm going to use the public directive. And I'm going to expose my entry point through this directive. Here, I'm going to start the entry point label. And from here on, I can start writing the code. First function I want to call from the system is the socket function to create a new socket. We can see that this function gets three parameters, and it's called like this. But since we're not writing C over here, writing assembly, I'm not going to call the function like this. I'm going to make the system call. And for the system call, I need the system call number of socket. To get more information about system calls, I'm going to open the man page of syscall. First of all, we can see here that we have the include file over here that we can use to get the definition of the sys constants. For this, I'm going to do something pretty cool. I'm going to create a new file and call it constants.c. I'm not going to actually write C code over here, but I'm just going to use this file to get the values of the constants from the header files, because I can't include this header file for my assembly. I'm going to later copy the values into my assembly. Now we have access to the system call constants. So I'm going to just say socket equals sys socket. This will give me the number of the socket system call. And this is a syntax that FASM understands, socket equals. This will just define a constant for FASM, so we can just use the word socket in our assembly. And it's just going to replace every occurrence of socket with whatever is here. Later, I'm going to run the preprocessor of GCC, and it's going to replace all these constants with the numerical values that they have. Afterwards, I'm going to search on the man page of syscall. I'm going to search for system call and then arc. And here I get to a table that talks about for every architecture, we have how the system call arguments are passed into the system call. Let's just scroll here a little bit until we get to the x64 architecture. And this is the order of the arguments that are passed to the system calls on x64. I'm just going to copy this aside because this will be very useful. This means that, for example, socket gets three arguments. So the first argument is going to be passed into RDI. Then the second one is going to be passed into RSI. Finally, the third argument is going to be passed to RDX. Now I'm going to open again the socket man page. Let's start passing in the arguments. First one is going to be domain, so I'm going to search here domain. We can see that we have a couple of options for domain. I'm going to use the AFINet, which means IPv4. I'm going to define a new constant for this. And I'm going to pass into RDI, which is the first argument, I'm going to pass AFINet. Afterwards, second argument is RSI. Let's go back to the man page here, and that's going to be type, so I'm going to search type. And I'm going to use SOC stream in this case. Last argument is going to be the pro call. I'm just going to pass in zero to keep it default. RDX is the third argument. Afterwards, I'm going to pass into REX the system call number that I want to make. In this case, it's going to be the socket system call. We save this into socket. Finally, I'm going to run the syscall instruction, and this will actually make the system call. After the system call finished, we have the return value of the system call in the REX register. If we go here to the man page of socket, to the section that talks about return, we can see that if it's successful, we get a file descriptor for the new socket. I'm going to save aside this file descriptor into R12. REX is going to be the return value of the system call. By the way, R12 is one of the registers that is safe to use between system calls. The reason I know this is if you go ahead here, I opened the documentation of the System5 ABI from OS Dev, and this is the binary interface that is also used on Linux. And if you scroll here to the x64 section, we can see that functions preserve the registers, and we have a list of registers here, and that includes R12, R13, R14, and R15. So we can safely use these registers between system calls. Now let's move on to the next call I want to make, which is a call to the bind function. 
By the way, I'm going to include this include file in my constants file. First argument passed into bind is going to be the socket file descriptor. So I'm going to pass into RDI R12, which is going to be the socket file descriptor. RSI is going to be the second argument. This will be the address structure. We're going to take a look at the man page of sock address soon. But for now, I'm just going to pass an address. I'm going to define it later. Finally, the last argument is going to be the size of the structure, and it's going to be 16 bytes. REX is going to be the system call number we want to use. In this case, it's going to be bind, and I'm going to define it over here. Now I'm going to make the system call, and I'm going to move into the data section and define the address structure over here. Now let's go ahead and open the man page for sock adder. And I'm going to scroll a little down here. This is a structure that I'm going to use. It's called sock adder in. This is a structure that is relevant for IPv4 addresses. We can see that we need to pass in three members, and they all have these weird types. So I'm going to need to check what is the size of each of these types. I'm going to do a little trick here. I'm going to include this file that it suggests over here into my constants.c file. And then I'm going to run the preprocessor on this file right now. I'm going to do this by running gcc minus e minus p both in uppercase, and I'm going to pass in the file, constants.c. And I'm going to redirect this into an output file. Let's just call it constants.txt. Now I'm going to open constants.txt. Now I can just search on this file for the relevant stuff. For example, I want information about SA family T. And we can see that in the end, SA family T is just a short. So this will be two bytes. In this case, I can use the DW directive which defines two bytes. If we go here back to the documentation of the FASM assembler, and we'll go to the section that talks about data definitions, we can see our table that explains the uh, different data directives. Each one has a different size. For example, DB is for one byte. That's for defined byte. DW is for defined word. That's two bytes. And we're going to also use DD, which is four bytes, and DQ, which is eight bytes. And as we can see suggested here in the comment, in the man page, I'm just going to use AFINet. Afterwards, we have the port. This is the type of the port, so I'm going to search this in the constants.txt. We can see that this is just the type def into UN16T. This is also 2 bytes. 16 is 16 bits. Now, if I was just writing this in C, I would use the htones function to convert from the host byte order to the network byte order, which in the case of x64 is different. But I'm not going to call a function from C, so I'm just going to make this conversion manually. For this, I'll just open up Python. And let's say, for example, I want to use the port 8080. So I'm going to use the hex function on this number. And I'm going to write this opposite. So if it's 1f90, I'm going to first start with 90. And then 1f. So this will be for the port number. And this will select port 8080. Finally, the last member is going to be the structure. So I'm going to search for this also in my constants. We can see that this is a structure with just one member. I'm going to search for this type. And we can see that in the end, it's just the UN32. This is four bytes. Four bytes, as you remember from the table, this is DD, define double word. And I'm just going to pass in zero because I want the server to run on all the local interfaces. Finally, I'm going to use DQ, which is defining eight bytes. And I'm going to put here zero. This will just put in the padding that is required, a padding of zeros in the end. Now we have this address structure ready. I can go back to the code here, and the bind call is ready. So now let's go ahead and open the man page for the listen, which is the next function I'm going to call. We basically use listen to prepare the socket to accept connections, and all it does is gets the socket file descriptor on the first argument. That's going to be RDI. That's going to be the first argument. RDI is going to be R12, because remember we saved into R12 the socket file descriptor. Next argument is going to be RSI, and that's going to be the backlog. I'm just going to choose a magic number here. I'm going to pass in 10. Basically, as you can see in the man page here, the backlog defines the maximum length to which the queue of pending connections for a socket file descriptor may grow. So this tells us basically how many connections can be waiting at the same time. 10 should be fine for now. Afterwards, REX will be the system call number that I want to use. In this case, it's going to be listen. Finally, I'm going to make the system call by running the syscall instruction. After listen, I'm going to use the accept system call. First argument is going to be also the socket file descriptor. 
Afterwards, the second and third arguments are optional. As you can see here, it says nullable and nullable here as well. And I'm not gonna use them because I don't need the information about the client connecting. So I'm just gonna pass in zero. REX is gonna be the system call number. Now let's go ahead in the man page of accept and I'm gonna search for a return. We can see that on success, these system calls return a file descriptor for the accepted client. This will basically be the file descriptor for the client connection. And this is also important to save aside. So I'm gonna put REX, which is gonna be the return value that comes back from accept. I'm gonna put this into R13. Now R13 is gonna hold the client socket file descriptor. Now, first thing I wanna do after a connection is coming into the server is I wanna read what the client is sending me. So I'm gonna use for this the read system call. First argument is gonna be the file descriptor to read. In this case, I'm gonna read the client socket. Second argument, RSI is gonna be the buffer. I'm gonna call this buffer for now. I'm gonna define it later in the bottom. Finally, the last argument is gonna be RDX, and that's gonna be how much bytes to read. Let's just read 256 bytes. REX is gonna be a system call number. Now let's define the buffer in the bottom here. Buffer is just gonna be DB, defined byte, and then I'm gonna use the dupe directive, which is part of the directives that come with FASM. I'm gonna say duplicate this 256 times, and I want to duplicate the zero digit. So this will basically prepare a buffer with 256 zeros. Now, assuming success, the buffer is now ready with something that was read from the socket, and I'm gonna go ahead and send back to the client index.html. For this, I'm gonna open the man page of the open system call. First argument, RDI, is gonna be the path name to open. I'm gonna define this later in the bottom. For now, I'm gonna call it path. And RSI is gonna be the flags. Since I'm opening an existing file, I don't need to pass anything into the mode argument. Let's search for flags over here. We can see your information about the flags argument. It must include one of the following access modes. I'm gonna use read only. Also, we need to add this include file to the constants. And I'm gonna move into rex, the system call number of open. Now, assuming the open has succeeded, the system call now returned back the file descriptor that was just opened by open. And I'm gonna pass this file descriptor into the next call I'm gonna make, which is a call to the read system call. First argument is gonna be the file descriptor. And as we said before, the file descriptor is now in rex that it came back from open. So I'm gonna pass this into read. RDI, the first argument into read, is gonna be rex. That was a return value from the system call. Afterwards, we have the buffer to read into. That's gonna be passed into RSI, the second argument. That's gonna be buffer two, let's see. I'm gonna define it later in the bottom. Finally, the size to read. That's just gonna be, let's say, 256 as well. Finally, REX is gonna be the system call number. We already have read over here, so I'm just gonna use read. And I'm gonna finally make the system call. Now let's go and define path and buffer to it at the bottom. Notice I'm putting a null terminator here after the string of index.html for the path. Now finally, after I finish reading index.html, buffer2 should contain the contents of index.html. I can just go ahead and send this on the socket. So the next system call I'm gonna use is the write system call. This enables me to write to a certain file descriptor. First argument for write is gonna be the file descriptor I want to write on. And that's going to be RDI. That's the first argument. And let's see, I forgot already what is the client file descriptor. Let's see. Here, we can see here the client socket file descriptor is R13. So I'm going to write into R13. Next argument is going to be RSI. And that's going to be the buffer I want to write. In this case, buffer2. That's a buffer that contains the contents of index.html. And finally, the count that I want to write. That's going to go into RDX. Let's say I want to write 256 bytes. 
rex is going to be the system call number. Let's add write over here. Nice, so everything should be working at this point. Let's go ahead and test this out. So I'm going to save everything with the w all command. And I'm going to run the GCC preprocessor on this file. And I'm going to again save this into constants.txt. Now let's take a look at constants.txt. And I'm going to scroll to the bottom of this file. And notice that almost everything is replaced nicely to numbers, except sock stream. Now, if we go ahead and search this in the file, sock stream, we can see that this is actually an enum, and this is not just a regular define. So I'm just going to copy the value from the enum over here. That's why it wasn't parsed by the preprocessor. That was just one, as we saw over there. We have two zeros here. I'm just going to delete one of them. That should be fine. Now I'm going to copy all this. I'm going to yank this into my assembly. And now we can finally go ahead and run the assembler on this assembly. So I'm going to save everything. Let's run the phasm command on server.asm. We have a small syntax error here. I'm just going to fix it real quick. I'm supposed to put the 256 before the dupe. I'm going to fix it here as well. As you can see right now, Phasm has successfully assembled the code. Now I'm going to run the linker on the object file that Phasm has produced. We have now server.o. Now before running the server, I'm going to prepare the index file that the server is going to serve. The file is going to start with a simple HTTP header. Now I'm going to save this. Just going to fix a little problem in the code. When specifying the port number, I need to add a 0x because this isn't hex. Now let's go ahead and save this. And I'm going to assemble this again with the phasm command and link this. Now let's go ahead and run the server. And I'm going to run this with strace so I can see what is happening under the hood. strace will give me information about the system calls as they are happening live. So you can see here exactly the parameters that will pass into bind. We can see that this looks fine. We have the port 8080. And we can see that it's now waiting on accept. So if I go to my browser, I'm using here Microsoft Edge, which is Chromium based. This should also work fine on Google Chrome. Now let's go ahead and open localhost on port 8080. As you can see, we're getting hello from assembly. Two important notes about this code. First of all, notice that after I made the last system call here, I didn't call exit. So the execution is not going to stop over here. And this will cause a segmentation fault in the program after it finishes handling the request. And that is because the execution is going to slide to the continuation here, and this is already invalid. Second thing to notice is that we're always serving the index.html, no matter what the client is sending us. So I'm not really doing anything with the buffer that I'm reading from the client. But that is just to keep the video short. You can just do comparisons on the data that is coming from the buffer and decide according to what you see in the buffer, what exactly you're going to serve to the client. I'm going to build upon this code on GitHub. I'm going to put a link in the description to link to the project. And I plan to improve this code. Subscribe for more programming videos and thanks for watching.